Welcome to the Quantum Leap Advantage audio newsletter. Today, uh, I'm going to speak in some specifics on perception. Many of you that have heard me speak before know that I've talked at length about perception is reality, equals reality. And having done seminars now, one day, three days, castle experiences, and a lot of keynotes to many thousands of people since I started May 22, 1993, uh, I now am aware more than I was when I put together the methodology how misunderstood perception is reality, what it doesn't mean to the average person that attends my seminars or listens to my tapes or hears me in the uh, keynotes that I give around the country and in Europe. The first topic that I'd like to share with you is your perception of what success is versus the perception of the people that you're trying to attract e either to your dream team, to your organization. Remember I've said that the people that you should be associated with are the people that are already where you want to be. You've heard me say that Machiavelli judges a ruler by who he surrounds himself with. Most of you that are listening to this tape are in the process of perhaps building a dream team or thinking about it. And you're perhaps wondering why I stress so much. For example, you only get one time to make a first impression. Well, for example, when I first see an individual and he comes to me looking like he just came out of a Brooks Brothers sales store, with a button-down shirt, white, dark suit, wingtip shoes. My perception of him is that he's a professional. The perception that you want people to have of you is that you're a professional. By professional, I mean someone that is destined to be extremely successful, so he looks successful now. The experience that I've had the last several months working with a lot of different companies that I have an equity ownership with and that I am now currently chairman of, it, um, it is uh, staggering to see that how different people sense their view of perception. I have partners in Phoenix, Arizona, that their, their perception of per perception equals reality is quite different than perhaps my partners that live in New York City or my partners that live in, in Florida. So I thought that it was extremely important that I sit down for the next 20 or 30 or 35 minutes on, the, on a tape to memorialize exactly what I mean and how I've seen it be very, very successful. We've all seen the Donald Trumps, the Bill Gates, the Lee Iacocas, the Rick Scotts of this world. They come across as extremely professional, extremely focused, and if you think about it, they all pretty much dress alike. Uh, they wear business suits. They're all very articulate. For the most part, they all speak very slowly. And for the most part, they are not pushy. A recent experience that I have with a partner in the last two or three weeks is that he has sold members on being on his dream team. Now, these members are former presidents of public companies. Um, in fact, uh, former president of a, a public bank, a very large bank. And in recent days, these people have backed out, more or less, of uh, the dream team. And we wonder why. And when I look at the facts, it becomes obvious to me that when selling a professional, a man that's perhaps run a public company or a woman that's run a public company, it's not like you're selling encyclopedias at the door. It's not like you're selling... Uh, items at Walmart. Uh, in fact, the perception should be that it's almost an understated sell, not an overstated sell, not like a carnival barker, uh, not like it's your life and death if this person doesn't come on to your dream team. This has a tendency to more times than not scare the individual off. Um, when I ask somebody, when I asked somebody to be on my dream team years ago when I was first starting, it was an understated sale. And in fact, I utilize quite often what I call the negative sale or the takeaway. By takeaway, I mean 
Mr. Jones, I'd like very much for you to be part of my dream team. I'd like very much for you to consider uh, an equity position on our board of directors. I'd like very much for you to help us over the next several years grow our company exponentially. But I realize you're very busy. And uh, I realize that normally your decision-making process might be very lengthy, but we really don't have time for that. And so I'm asking you to make a decision now. If you can't make a decision now, then I can understand and I'll move on to my second choice. Now, what I've done is I've asked him to be part of our dream team, but at the same time, I've used his busy schedule to back him into making a decision now. If you remember when Andrew Carnegie asked Napoleon Hill uh, if he wanted to write the book Think and Grow Rich, which would be named Think and Grow Rich many years, many years later, he gave him 60 seconds. He took out his pocket watch, he looked at his pocket watch, and he counted down. He didn't tell Napoleon Hill how many seconds or how many minutes he had, but he had already predetermined he had 60 seconds. Now, if I remember correctly, Napoleon Hill answered him in 26 or 28 seconds. Now, until you practice, and again, perception is reality. If you come across speaking slowly, if you come across poised, if you come across confident, there's a much higher probability that the individual is going to say yes. When values are clear, decisions are easy. Many of you have heard me say this before. When you're asking these people to be on your dream team, if the value is clear in your mind, and the value is clear in your mind, transferring it into words to be assimilated by his mind, the decision-making process will be much easier. My experience has been in recent months that most of my disciples or protégés are making the decisions too complicated. It should be very easy. You get 1 or 2 percent or 3 or 4 percent, whatever the equity, for your name, your reputation, your business acumen to be on the board. It's very simple. If the value is there, if the individual, if the perception of the value is there to the individual, the decision will be made, be made easy. He won't think about directors and officers insurance for when you make a mistake or when you go bankrupt or when you don't pay the loan at the bank. And these are the kinds of things that are coming up now as my people, my attendees, the alumni of the quantum leap advantage methodology are going out and building dream teams. And the reason these questions are coming up is they are not being sold in a low-key professional manner. Again, the perception has to be that you have overcome fear appearing real, false expectations appearing real. When they are comfortable, the answer will be yes. Now, perception goes beyond that. When you meet this Mr. Jones or, or Ms. Smith and you are discussing the fact that you want them to be part of your dream team, it has to be matter of fact. The perception is that you know they are going to say yes. It's not that you know that they're probably going to say no. It can't be you know that they don't want to be part of a startup company. Equity positions are not given away normally, or I should say at least the majority of the time, unless they're startup or organizations. What I sense from talking to the people in the field is that they are going to these individuals and they are not able to convey to the individual that he or she is going to be part of an ongoing organization. That's why I've told the individuals at seminars, the people that I talk to, the people that are part of my marketing staff, that it's better to get the Coopers and Libran, the law firms on your dream team first, where it shows that there's some credibility on your dream team as opposed to getting the board of directors first and then the um, accounting firm or law firm. You should not expect any dream team member. And remember, these people should be where you want to be. They should have already been super successful, either in your field or some related field. These people should already have a sense of uh, credibility in the environment that you're going to be taking them. From that perception, 
and you need an anchor on your dream team. Often I'm the anchor. By anchor, I mean that like in real estate, you'll have an anchor tenant. You want somebody that you can hook on to, so to speak, like um, a shooting star. You want to hook on to the tail of that shooting star. I see often in the field when I talk to people that have attended the seminars, instead of going to get an anchor, what they go to get is they go to get the easiest person for easiest person first as opposed to the hardest person. Now remember in our presentations, and I've said it many, many times in the tapes, you start with the least likely first and you're practicing. You really don't think they're going to say yes to the dream team anyway. Then you go to the individual that can be your anchor. You convince your anchor and from the anchor you'll convince many successful three or four or five or six very successful people to be part of your dream team. It's all perception. When I was building Great Western Resources Board, one of the first board members outside the employees that I had was Governor Hugh Carey, the former governor of New York. I asked him. I presupposed that we were going to be very successful. I presupposed that we weren't going to take too much of his time. I presupposed that he, at that time, was getting 1% of the equity in the company, actually option on the equity in the company. I presupposed that he would be on the executive committee. And all the things that I presupposed, he just matter-of-factly said yes, yes, yes. And in the end, he said, how can I help? And one of the things that's also come out from my conversations in the field, a question that most professionals will ask you, is I'm interested as long as I can make a contribution. And what does that mean? What is the perception of that? Well, the perception is he doesn't want or she doesn't want to be pulled onto a board of directors given equity unless they can do something for the company, for the board. And that is his perception is that he wants to make sure that you realize that he's not on there for a free ride. Now, as you can see, this perception works both ways. If you come across positive, if you come across acting successful, he's going to come across or she's going to come across the same as opposed to, it's not like selling a used car, it's not like selling, or a pre-owned car, as they call them now. It's not, it's not anything like that at all. Now, I'd like to spend a moment on talking about, I alluded to it a couple minutes ago, false expectations appearing real. In the last three-day seminar I gave in um, October here in Los Angeles, we spent several hours talking about fear and overcoming fear and what I do to overcome fear, and what other high-performance people do to overcome fear. And it was clear. We broke for lunch. We came back after lunch. And uh, I asked, are there any questions? And um, in so many words, people said, um, well, if we immerse ourselves in the quantum leap methodology 100%, we live it, we breathe it, we eat it, we sleep it, and we're still afraid, how do we overcome that? And the perception is that even if you do all the things that I suggest in the three-day seminars or at the Castle Experience, and you're still, your perception is that Dan Pena can do it, Donald Trump can do it, Lee Iacocca can do it, but I can't. Well, if your perception is that, well, then by definition, then you can't. And we, we talked about hanging around people that are extremely successful. How do we find these people? Well. The perception is these people don't want to see you, and the perception is wrong. Uh, in the three-day seminar, I used the example of Mayor Fidel Vargas, who called Jerry Buss, Dr. Jerry Buss, who owns the Lakers because he wanted to own a sp sports franchise. And Jerry Buss, seeing him after three phone calls and having him up to his box and uh, seeing the Laker game and answering a lot of questions, and Jerry Buss said this is the first time in 25 years anybody had ever called him to ask him for his advice, uh, let alone to uh, be their mentor. Now, the perception is on your part, the listeners, that these people are very difficult to get for you to see. Uh, and the answer to that is that that's wrong. The perception is that, but the reality is just the opposite. I've heard, or you've heard me say on countless times, we give out our phone number, 1-800-QUANTUM, K-W-A-N-T-U-M, and I get called a half a dozen times perhaps in a month, maybe 10 times in a month, and we give our number out to you know, thousands of people a year. The people that field those phone calls, uh, our, our marketing staff, um, 
uh, feel them to find out what they're about. But the perception is that I'm too busy. The perception is that I am busy. The perception is that I'm not interested. The perception is that how can a little person like me have anything that Mr. Penny is going to be interested in? The perception is that my deal is no good. And it goes on and on and on. And again, it's back to perception. If the perception in your mind is that your deal isn't good enough, then it's not good enough. If the perception in your mind is how would Mr. Pena or Mr. Jones or whoever you, were going to, you would call, why would they be interested in anything I had to say, that perception becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. What you're really saying is that my project, hopefully your dream, isn't worthy. If you feel that your project, which should be your dream, and if it's not your dream, it shouldn't be your project, isn't worthy, then how can you possibly sell it? As I started out in this tape a few minutes ago saying that we are seeing in the field that people are not being convinced because their perception is that the people that are the, um, uh, the CEOs or the uh, initiator of the project don't believe in it enough. Well, if you don't believe in it enough, the listener, to be able to convince in a professional way, then you have really no right for the listener or the, the, the potential mentor or the potential dream team member to perceive anything other than the project's not worthy of him joining it. Perception is extremely important. There was a book written many years ago in the late 70s, Winning Through Intimidation. Although we're in the middle 90s uh, as, I, as I give this tape, um, many of the precepts that that book was founded on are still germane. Um, he would fly in uh, on a plane. The perception is he was an expert. He would carry a briefcase, which seems kind of corny now. He might have had his lunch in the briefcase, but the perception is he had important papers inside. Um, he would make sure that he only had certain time allocated for this particular presentation or this particular meeting. The perception is he was very busy. The perception was that he was obviously doing big things. The perception is always that you are more than you are. We want to enhance that perception. Uh, in 1981, I was on the um, cover of a magazine uh, when I got the Latin Business uh, uh, Award uh, for most successful business owner in, in the United States. The perception was that I had a lot more money than I had when I was on the front page of the LA Times and it won a Pulitzer Prize. The perception was that I had a lot more money than I had. You want to foster that perception. When Donald Trump went bankrupt for several billion dollars a few years ago, the perception was that he was all right. Now, whether he was all right or not, I have no idea. But the perception was he was all right. It's hard to imagine that anybody can go bankrupt for three or four or five billion dollars and be all right. That means he's lost or has a negative net, net worth of three or four or five billion. And it's difficult for me, a uh, finance guy, to believe that he's all right, but the perception was. It's as I talk about perception and never sharing doubts. You've heard me tell the story that I went away for three weeks on a tr business trip, and my last words before I left the office were to the vice chairman that when he asked me, how do you think our acquisition is going, I said, it's going to be an uphill battle. It's going to be tough sledding. I come back three weeks later, and the deal has disintegrated because people had heard in some uh, obscure, uh, innocuous way that the old man thought the deal was crashing, so everybody stopped working on it. I can't emphasize enough on this tape that perception is at the very core, it's the very fulcrum of leverage in the quantum leap uh, uh, methodology. It's the very thing that uh, all the mega perform performers that I talk about, uh, that you read about, that you see on TV, that you hear on the radio, is that they're going to be successful, they are successful, they act successful. If you, the listener, want to adopt totally the quantum leap methodology, you must ad adopt the idea that perception is reality. You have to act successful to be successful. You have to act successful to have people believe that you are successful. It then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You heard me talk about people making presentations to banks. And I had a man, we were going up the elevator in New York, and, um, and his hands were perspiring, and they were wet, like he had dipped them in, the, in, in a bowl of water. And I told him that we were going to have to cancel the meeting, 
and we were going to have to come back another day. And I went into the bank and I told him that my, uh, my partner wasn't feeling well, which was not a lie. He wasn't feeling well. Um, and uh, we came back, or we went back to the hotel, we packed it, and we came back two days later. And I kept, uh, with a uh, tissue, I kept on touching the palms of his hands to make sure that they weren't moist. And we went in and uh, we made our presentation. Uh, and he, when he shook hands with the banker, uh, both going in and coming out, his hands were dry. Uh, and um, I was able to keep him from stuttering. Um, but what do you think the perception is when you go into a financial institution to make a, a, a presentation? If you're stuttering, you're perspiring, perspiration is coming down the forehead of your head. I mean, what do you think he's thinking? I mean, that you had a, a rough night because you had too much to drink the night before? No. He's thinking, one, the perception is maybe this deal's crooked. If the deal's not crooked, maybe the guy's crooked. There's something wrong. It sends red flags up. It's your job to send up, not red flags, but to send out signals that in, so that he perceives or the group perceives that uh, this is a great deal that they, they're excited about. Um, you've heard me talk about I've never seen a part-time high-performance person and I've never seen a high-performance person that wasn't super enthusiastic. Well, what is the perception when you see me speak and I'm enthusiastic? What is your perception or what do you think the perception is of an individual that sees another person have great enthusiasm, great belief? Uh, the perception is that it's a great deal. I mean, if he believes this way, then it, it, it must be a good deal. I can't, you know, I, I'm saying it over and over again, and it seems to be sounding redundant to me, but I can't say it enough because it's obviously not getting across as it should. Perception is reality. People will react to you the way you are perceived. If you drive up, and I know everybody listening to this tape can't afford a Rolls Royce like I drive that has Quantum Leap license plates. But if you drive up, I used to rent cars when I was in cities, and I used to rent uh, Lincoln Town cars. And uh, those seemed to be the rage in, uh, in the uh, 80s when I was doing these kinds of presentations. But I'd rent a town car, and I'd uh, drive to the meeting. Didn't have to come in a limousine, but I sure as heck didn't uh, rent a um, whatever the... Uh, night. At that time, you could rent a car for like $16 a day. I forget what kind of car it was, but whatever the kind of car it was, I didn't want to be driving in it. Um, and when we, we'd go to lunch... Um, the um, the perception would be at least you know he's here to do business he's here he can afford a car that uh, isn't a, uh, a cracker box um, I, I see people um, stay at um, um, the lesser motels that cost a, a lot less money and that's all right unless you leave your phone number for the hotel or the banker or the financial institution that you're trying to get a meeting with. He calls you back there. Um, the, uh, there, were year, there were several years that, because I had to stay in hotels like that, and I knew what the perception was, is that I didn't leave my phone number. I would make sure that I continue to call back, continue to call back, continue to call back till I got through. And when that didn't work, uh, I would actually go to the financial institution, and I would sit in the foyer, and I would call from downstairs. And uh, I would say that I'm just dropping by, and uh, the guards in those days uh, knew what I was doing because I wasn't obviously just dropping by because I'm sitting in, there in the lobby for five hours. It's not like I just dropped by. But I can't emphasize this, and um, I think it's, it's one of the, the hardest things for the individuals that go through the quantum leap uh, uh, seminars to understand and grasp. Now that we're doing more than just the three-day seminars, we're doing the one-day on raising capital seminars and uh, we, in the not too distant future, we'll be doing our first seminar on uh, deals and acquisitions, making deals and acquisitions. Um, it's it's clear, especially when making deals and acquisitions and raising money, that perception and how the other side of the transaction, either be it a financial institution or an individual that owns a business, how he perceives you. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I use my home in California, 3.65 acres overlooking the Pacific Ocean, for a lot of meetings because the perception is uh, that um, uh, I can afford to do whatever we're considering doing. It's another reason that I've never not closed a transaction that we met at the castle. 
um, there's a certain ambiance when you come through the main gates and you look across the lock and now you see an 18-hole golf course. In your own way, you can get the same level of perception across. Um, I can't stress it enough. It's, it, it's extremely important. Um, I heard recently one of our attendees tell another attendee that he didn't believe that practicing was important, practicing presentations. Um, unless you're Lord Olivier or Paul Newman or somebody of that elk, a great actor, I would submit to you that the perception on an unpracticed presentation will come across just like that, unpracticed. Um, I've said it dozens and dozens of times. If Ross Perot and Dan Pena still practice presentations, there's no reason on, on this earth why you, as individuals uh, that are aspiring to um, build your companies to make your dreams come to fruition, should practice. The perception is good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, in, in the last few minutes of this, of this tape, I, I want to discuss how you as individuals can overcome your perception that the other side of whoever you're, you're, you're talking to, be it a financial institution or a potential acquisition or uh, just a, a creditor, how you overcome the perception uh, that uh, they don't believe you because um, part of the problem in the perception, perception process is that you don't believe in us. So how in God's name are you going to get the other side to believe in us? Now, I want you to maybe stop the tape, sit down, uh, and take notes if necessary on these, on these next few minutes. Okay. You theoretically have immersed yourself You're in the quantum leap methodology. You understand that arithmetic growth isn't necessary and that exponential or quantum growth is, ob is, is, uh, is something that is uh, achievable by virtually everyone listening to this tape. Um, you have hopefully read and disseminated uh, a lot of quantum leap methodology, which isn't new. You've heard me say on many times that the methodology that I have memorialized has not changed in the last couple hundred years. Now, the quickest way for you to believe that the perception of what you're saying will come across truthfully is if you, as my older son would say, hang out with people that are part of the Quantum Leap Advantage um, alumni. We have had people that have tried to structure their business trips, uh, actually have contemplated moving to other cities so they could be closer to other uh, Quantum Leap Advantage uh, alumni. Recently, um, uh, our marketing staff moved from San Diego to uh, right near where I live in Palos Verdes to be closer to me so we could interface on a, um, well, not hourly basis, but for sure, uh, a daily basis. The, um, and why have they done that? Uh, as far as the marketing uh, group is concerned, uh, they're from San Diego, or not from San Diego, they've lived there quite a long time now. They've done it because they want to be uh, all they can be, and they know them having freer access to me and the people that I'm in business with is obviously going to enhance that. Um, the way that you build up your confidence in perception is reality is by talking to, on a frequent basis, as many Quantum Leap uh, alumni uh, as you possibly can. The um, one method of practicing uh, your perception and perception equals reality or method is to do public speaking. Um, as some of you have heard me say, I got an F in public speaking in high school. Uh, I've since made not tens of thousands of speeches, but I'm sure thousands. Um, the, um, and to become a be better public speaker so my perception was more effective uh, to audiences, I practiced in mirrors. You've heard me say that 
I practiced to take out the first girl that uh, I went out on a date with when I was 16 years old, and that um, time hasn't been kind to that person. I saw her on my 30-year high school reunion, and I thought that she was um, the mother of the daughter that I had asked out many years before. But I used to practice in front of mirrors. Um, the uh, I went to hear people, famous people speak when I was a very young man. I used to go hear uh, uh, President John Kennedy speak uh, before he uh, passed away. Uh, I've, I've been to hear many, many uh, very noted speakers like Zig Ziglar, for example, who's a great public speaker, uh, a great motivational speaker. Um, I've gone to see the Dennis Waitleys of this world. Uh, I've gone to see a number of very um, proficient speakers. The perception when De Zig Ziglar gets on the stage is he's in command. The perception is he knows his subject matter. The perception is he's having fun. The perception is that he is not a part-time motivational speaker. He's a full-time motivational speaker. The perception is he enjoys the heck out of what he's doing. The perception is he is extremely effective. And guess what? He is effective because the perception of all those things I just mentioned. Another way to allow yourself to believe more in the perception is, is reality is to visualize yourself. I talk about it in the five credos, and that will be the subject of another tape specifically, but I talk about seeing yourself now or seeing yourself ahead in time, seeing yourself living in the large mansion, seeing yourself drive a Rolls Royce or seeing yourself uh, on, a, on a great cruise ship uh, going to some place that you want, seeing yourself. Um, yesterday's dreams are today's realities. Uh, and, um, and seeing yourself and closing your eyes and feeling that feeling. You've heard me in seminars talk about um, pushing the uh, elevator at 1111 Bagby in Houston, Texas and going up to the 17th floor and the elevator doors open and seeing and stepping out on the Italian marble and looking to my left uh, and looking at the mahogany uh, foyer uh, and visualizing that. Well, perception is that when I used to talk about that in years gone by, that it was already there. Now, it happens to be there now. But when I talked about it uh, in the early 80s, it wasn't. And, and how often do we do this? Well, I used to do it every day whenever every hour on the hour or every 10 minutes or every 20 minutes or whenever I wasn't doing something else or whenever I had, would have a lapse of thought when I was trying to concentrate, I'd think about uh, the things that I was going to be able to do. I'd see myself walking across the estate. I'd see myself, uh, as my wife would uh, uh, remind me, I see our children playing on the tennis courts at our estate. I see the nannies and governesses, plural, working with our children. I am walking through the uh, drawing room into our grand library. And I, I practice this, um, you know, in the morning at least and in the evening just before I went to sleep. Now, um, one of the things that I've recommended that I don't see happen very often is when you make a financial presentation or you make a presentation of any kind, very few people will ask for feedback on the presentation. Um, that may be because they're afraid to hear what the, what the presentation sounded like, uh, and uh, that's okay. But if you practice enough and you make your remembering your worst presentations or your worst prospect first, by the time you get to the prospects that count, uh, you'll have um, uh, garnered enough effectiveness that you shouldn't worry about being embarrassed. But you want to ask for feedback. Um, one of the things that we do at the um, Raising Capital Seminar uh, is that we do role playing and then we ask for feedback. How good was I? Um, these things that I've touched upon on uh, perception are the main or more salient, I should say, points that should be important and should be focused on. Um, I say in the five credos, practice within when you're without. What does that mean? Well, that means that when I'm sitting on a plane, uh, instead of watching the movie or when I'm not reading uh, or I'm not writing, I close my eyes and I practice the presentations that I'm going to give 
I practiced a speech that I'm going to give. A few years ago, I gave a speech to um, the uh, School of Business and Administ uh, Business Administration and Economics where I went to undergraduate school, and I told the audience that I had, I took, there was about 7,500 or 7,800 people in the audience. I said, this is not the first time that I've been here. This is I've made this speech to this group many, many, many times, hundreds of times in, my, in the last 10 or 15 years because I had practiced. I knew someday I'd get called back to talk to the uh, to the graduating seniors where I went to college, and I was. Um, and just as I practiced for this um, commencement address that I gave uh, to the school, to the college that I went to, um, and it was a positive occurrence, when you visualize and practice in your own mind, um, it, it should only be positive occurrences. You're visualizing and practicing in your own mind a presentation that you're giving, you're giving the right kinds of answers, you're giving the right kind of information to the individual so he can make a positive decision. So you're practicing positive occurrences. You're acting as if you had no limits to your abilities. You, just as I just alluded to, Joe Montana does not see Jerry Rice drop the ball in the end zone. He sees him tuck it in and going across for a touchdown. Uh, now the quickest, the easiest, and the best way for you to make perception your ally is to one, practice, practice, practice. Two, hang around with people that are already perceived to be successful. And three, to either talk to on the phone, correspond with, or see in person as many of the Quantum Leap Advantage alumni as you possibly can. Thank you. Follow what this tape covered on perception and You'll make it very easy and you'll enhance your ability to grow geometrically now.